Dave, um, you know, what are uh, things that you've noticed about companies and you work with some of the biggest ones? Uh, what makes one different from the other? Uh, I think I might have mentioned feedback before, and I think uh, what, um, how you give and get feedback uh, is a critical for, uh, I think, for, for learning. If you can't get feedback, then it's hard to learn. Um, and I've given, you know, I've had an, the, the, the privilege to be asked to give feedback to, to different organizations, and I, 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 could, I could contrast two tech companies. Um, one, in one case, um, the company, you know, both large companies, but in one case the company uh, was, um, felt that it had a need to defend the product. So w when I was giving feedback, I was hearing a lot of, well, this, there, was a, there was a reason why we did this, and, you know, just sort of a lot of explanations, and um, just, I just, you know, felt a little bit of defensiveness from the people. In the other case, um, I didn't really have a sense of how the guy was receiving what I was saying, but I, I just knew that he couldn't get enough. He kept asking me more questions, and everything that I would say, he would explore with me and ask deeper questions to make me really think about what was it that I was, what was it that I was saying, what was it that I was feeling, why did I feel this way, and uh, I think this is a good lesson for anyone who want, individual company, uh, small team, group who wants to get feedback. When you uh, when you ask someone for feedback, they want to know that you are interested in hearing their opinion. They don't want to hear the explanations of why you did this or why you did that. They don't want to feel that you have a need to defend the product or service. They want to feel that you are really interested in what they have to say. You know, Even if you're not, even if you have reasons for the things that you do, uh, when it t comes time to get feedback, suspend your disbelief. <laughs> You know, and uh, suspend all judgment and just focus on listening and try to see things from that person's perspective. Try and empathize with their point of view. They don't know the product as well as you do. They, uh, they, they have only maybe the vaguest or simplistic notion of what you're trying to achieve. But what you want to understand is what they are trying to achieve. There's a woman that I have a tremendous amount of respect for named Kathy Sierra. She works on user experience and... Um, uh, she writes about user experience and having great experiences. And one of the things she told me that, that always stuck with me is this idea of when you, when you create a product or a service or when you write a book, or you know, for me it was writing a book, but whatever you, that it is that you do, um, it's not about how awesome you are. It's about how awesome you can help them become. It's, how, it's about how awesome they are. So when you're thinking about people using your product or people... Uh, customers, people using your product or service, um, and when you have conversations with them, remember the conversations are not about how awesome you are. The conversations need to be about how awesome they are and how you can help them become even more awesome.